think we can start. People will be joining and many will watch the, the film possibly tonight or tomorrow morning. And well, welcome you all, you all. Thank you very much, Marcelo Aviramia Caetano. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. You, you were elected Secretary General of the International Social Security Association in December 2018, and you started your activities in Geneva in the first months of January 2019. So it's a little bit more than one year that you have been there. You are from Brazil with a PhD from the Catholic University of Brasilia, and before being elected Secretary General of ISA, you were the Secretary of Social Security in, in Brazil. You have a 10-page CV, so I will not read it all. It will take the, the whole hour. Well, thank you really very much for being with us. And the subject of today is really, we find it to, to be a bit provocative because uh, Social Security is in the lips of everybody every day now, or the Social Security coverage or the lack of Social Security coverage, the challenges of the past for Social Security and the new challenges of Social Security. So we all wonder if the problem is the virus or the problem is the absence or the lack or in the inefficiency of Social Security in many countries. I have read most of ESA papers and one of that one that struck me is that still we are in 2020 and most of the world population does not enjoy of social security. And even those countries who claim having strong social security, the COVID-19 showed that they are not as efficient as they should be. So you have a big challenge and, and your clients almost 400 Social security institutions in the world have a big challenge in front of them. So thank you very much for being with us and for uh, sharing your, your thoughts and your vision with us. Manuela Tortora, who is the Vice President of Gray Cells, she is the one who will conduct the session. So please, Manuela, could you give us some instructions, indications before giving the floor to Marcelo, please? Yes, uh, sure. Uh, if if you click uh, at the bottom of your screen on uh, an icon that says uh, chat or converser in French or conversar in Spanish or whatever it is, it opens a right uh, column, uh, a white right column when at the bottom of, it, of, of the column you can write and then with enter you send the option to send to everybody or to individual uh, participants. If you click on the arrow that uh, selects uh, um, a person, um, the idea is uh, is of course to to listen to our in, in our guests uh, first, and then to have questions or comments as you wish, so that also our speaker can also react and complement uh, whatever he wants to, 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 to do uh, during the, the chat that is usually one hour and a half, uh, more or less. Uh, so um, I think that's all in terms of instructions. The only instruction is to, to, to think, to listen, and to, to be provocative, as we said, because this is the purpose of these great talks. We do not have any sort of institutional setting or limitation is a totally free spirits meeting that we have uh, uh, here. Uh, so please, um, uh, Mr. Caetano, the floor is yours. Okay, well, uh, thank you very, very much for this invitation to participate at the, this video conference, at this webinar. Good afternoon to everybody. Let me, uh, I know that many people who, who is attending the, that, that, that video conference, they used to work at ESA, but let me introduce a little bit ESA before. ESA stands for International Social Security Association. We are an NGO and we are based in Geneva and our members are basically the social security administrations who implement the policy of social security. Uh, so as Alejandro has mentioned, we have almost 400 members 
from, from, from more than 140 countries, so all over the world, regardless of the continents, from, from Asia, Africa, Europe, America, Pacific, uh, we are really spread all over the world. And so by this month of March, February, March, it started to appear the COVID and then by March, that it was declared as a pandemic. And when we talk about our members, we have seen, especially in the month, the month of March, a major challenge to all of them. And this challenge, it can be divided into three different subjects. The first one, as they are social security uh, administration, social security institutions, they have to deal with different benefits, with new benefits or with modification of benefits. And as they are social security administrations, some of them just with the benefits they pay, they pay some of them with the contributions, the collection of contributions that they receive, and some of them with both. So this, this, just this point, it could be a, a, a major challenge to all of them to work with new benefits, new forms of contributions or modified benefits, modified forms of contributions. But it was not just the modification of the service that they provide, there was also a very big, a huge impact on the demand of services that they provide as well. So if we take examples of unemployment insurance institutions, the part of, of, of Social Security, you see examples where they have to deliver thousands of benefits per week and then it changed to hundreds of thousands of benefits per week not just for employment insurance, but also for health and many other parts of social security as well. So uh, we are seeing that this crisis, it generated new sort, new kinds of benefits or new ways of paying contributions. Besides that, uh, all of a sudden, unexpected increase in the demand or service that they provide. And not just this, the third vector of this change in the way that they work uh, due to the coronavirus was also a new way of providing service. Now they have to provide service by teleworking, they have to comply with social distance norms, limitations in commuting, limitations in attending their clients. So uh, it's a completely new way of managing the work. So this huge difference for them. But it was not just for our members. This COVID, it also, uh, brought major challenge to us at ESA as well. And so all of a sudden, almost overnight, we were asked to, to work via teleworking. Okay that we were more or less anticipating it, but it was quite a challenge because the, the first thing, the, then the internal, challenge to, to, to ESA. The first thing that we had to see was where are we able to deliver the, the service that we provide to members via telework and so we had to check the software, we had to check the hardware and yes we were organized to it and we are being able to deliver the service to members. But 
I can say in a second best perspective, okay? Because as we are the ESA and NGO, so we must provide some content. So the content is social security and especially the management of social security. Uh, but it's not just providing content, it's also networking people. And when you network people, most of networking is done via face-to-face -face talks, seminars, conference, forums, things like this. They visit us, we visit them. So it's a, a different way to do this. But concerning the content, and service that we provide, we were able to, to keep our track. So the teleworking concerning, strictly the teleworking concerning the hardware and software, the, the daily management, we were able to do this as well. Uh, there was also a challenge regarding the governance. So the talks with the president, with the treasurer, with the DO, with the control commission, we had to, to to deal with it as well. We were able to deal with this. Another thing that I, that we at ESA assume that were very important is the way that we communicate to ourselves. So the way that we communicate internally to our staff, it is very important as well. And also the way that we make the communication to members, what's changed, things like this. But this is more the internal, uh, way that we work. Okay. Another change that we had to do during this time was to provide a new line of services to members. And why? Because we are seeing that the traditional way of having conference, seminars, workshops, is not viable during these times, so it must be changed. And so uh, during these last two months, we uh, introduced uh, two new line of service. One of them is the coronavirus monitor, which, in which we provide articles regarding the change in social security, some articles are related to branch of so branch of social security. Some articles are related to some countries, what they have done in social security. So content information that we provide to members. Also uh, a series of COVID news that we simply clip. It's from, from newspapers, but news that are related to that are related to uh, related to to social security, a table of countermeasures in which we can see from hundreds of countries what measures that that specific countries have done uh, concerning social security, concerning social uh, COVID and social security. So it's possible to, to see this list of, of actions and measures uh, uh, to, to the COVID. And also we establish a series of webinars, okay? Uh, webinars in different language. So we are presenting this in the last one month, six weeks, more or less like this. Uh, providing webinars to members, by members, the speakers used to be the members. So today we had one uh, webinars with a member from Germany and another from China. Uh, this one was in English this morning. Uh, a series of webinars that shows our capacity to adapt to ourselves. And the, now the, 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 the the series of webinars are more related to the deconfinement and the measures that countries are ad ad adopting during this deconfinement period. The previous ones were more related to the, to the measures that the country adopt to react to the, to, to the COVID. Uh, the attendance is quite good for these webinars. We are having an attendance 
it it varies a little bit according to 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 the, to the language and also to to the time zones. But for example, a webinar in English, we have an attendance of at about 50 countries per webinar from all over continents. When we do it in French, it is quite francophonic. So you see an attendance of in Europe of Belgium, France, Luxembourg, Swiss, but there are some sort of 13 uh, African countries that attended and in Spanish it's more related to the Americas Latin America but we see this and as these uh, uh, limitations in traveling in physical events will continue of course that we will continue with this the, the way that we provide uh, uh, knowledge to members and the way in which they can interact and show what they are doing to other countries will continue being for the next months with these webinars. And we are uh, going to a next phase of webinars uh, in which is not that related to the COVID, to the COVID, but to topics that are more general to, to social security and the way that our members uh, see the social security. So this is a change that we had to do during the last two months, one and a half month, uh, in the way that we work in turn. And when we see our members, they are facing this challenge of having to provide new benefits, modified benefits, of having to to deal with a very, very expressive increase in the demand for service that they provide, and also new ways for managing, for administering the, the service that they provide. And by this experience that we are having, changing contacts, with members, interacting with members. What message that we can bring to social security, the impact of social, of COVID in social security? I think that we can summarize into two major messages. The first message is a policy message in the way that an unexpected crisis like that, that began as a health crisis, that immediately, immediately afterwards, it became also an economic, a social economic crisis. We have a very, a really strong policy message in the sense that social security is extremely relevant to minimize the impact of prices like that, like it was in a previous crisis, a completely different one, because the economic crisis, if you see the crisis of 2008, also social security, institutions were extremely demanded for this, not like this one, but also this. And so when we have big economic crisis, we see that uh, social security is a way to minimize the impact, the social economic impact of this crisis. And we see this via the change in contributions, Social Security that happened one, two weeks after the pandemic was declared. The changes in benefits, the new benefits that were created in Social Security in order to minimize the impact of this crisis. Not just to react to this crisis and minimize its impact, 
uh, in social economic aspects, but also by minimizing the social economic impact is also very important for bringing political stability to society and social cohesion to society. And you know, as we see that social security is a major instrument in order to minimize the impacts of such crises, not just the pandemic one, but also economic, or economic crisis in the, in the recent past, we see the need of keeping coverage high in countries where the coverage is high or making it bigger and making it more comprehensive in countries where coverage is not high. Why? Because in order to minimize the social economic impact, the potential political uh, impact to bring social cohesion. If you do not have a, 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 a big coverage of social security, you can have a very, very good social security, but it's just for some people, then it, it, it will not be possible to, to minimize this sort of effect. So the first message that this crisis brings is, uh, is a policy message that it shows the, the importance of social security as a way to react to crisis, to minimize social, economic, political impact of crisis, to bring social cohesion to society. But there is also a second message of this crisis that's not exactly related to policy, but it's much more related to the management of the public sector. And in the case of ESA in particular, uh, the management of social security administrations, of social security institutions. The interesting point is that this crisis, a short-term crisis, it began March, February this year, so it's just some months that we are, that we are living with such a crisis. But we can, and it will finish. We do, we do not know exactly when, but it will take some months, and then the world will become to normal, although a new normal, but it will become to, to normal. But we are seeing that concerning the management of social security, there are long-term impacts. And there are long-term impacts in the way that we work and in the way that social security administrations work. So I assume that teleworking, home office is something that uh, people will reflect a lot in some months from now. It will be something more normal than it is now. Also for economic reasons, because it's also a way to, to save on office spaces as well. It can be seen as well as a way to bring a better life work balance as a way to, to minimize the, 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 the usage of, of fuel, so many impacts of it. Also concerning the way that we work, uh, the way that we meet people, uh, I think that there will also be some long-term impacts in the case of business trips, and then we are seeing that it's possible via Zoom, via the video conference, app softwares, webinar app softwares to, to make a contact with people. And many times it's, it's even more productive than face-to-face. -face. Uh, the way that we organize meeting, 
Uh, I think that there will be change in this as well. Uh, the customer contact, because for these two, two members, it's, it's very important, no? because uh, they provide, they pay the benefits, they pay the pensions, they pay the employment insurance. So the way that they make contact with members, it's been changed. It's something making a, a different comparison, some short-term uh, impact that has long, the short-term effect that has long-term impacts. If we see the, 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 the Twin Towers attack no, on the 11th of September of 2001, it changed completely the way that we used to travel via plane, okay? Um, by that time, people were not imagining passing via X-rays, things like this. And I also, uh, I'm also seeing that the way that we are, we do the the contact with the, with the clients, with the customers, with the people that get the benefits from Social Security will be changed as well. So there are changes in the way that the Social Security administrations work. Another major challenge, sorry, another major change uh, uh, regarding the, the management of, of Social Security, I think that is too much related to ITC, uh, because we are doing now things that would, in one month, things that would have taken normal times, one year, two years, five years to, to do. So I, I am seeing uh, that uh, digital service, development of apps, data security, automation of process, uh, these things will appear faster than before. As we are seeing here, probably uh, if there were, if, if this pandemic didn't happen, we would not have this meeting this way by a Zoom. And now we are having this meeting by a Zoom. And they assume that in the future, many meetings will continue to be via this sort of apps. So the usage of this new technology, I think that it, it, it was too much increased and it will become a long-term impact. But then this is very important because there is also this fuzz and bus in order to use this technology, people take too much into consideration the security, okay, it's important, but as social security administrations, we also need to take into account that if we are using this new technology, if we are not creating a digital divide, okay, because we see that, our, that there exists many people with difficult in access uh, in this ITC information and, 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 communi and communication technology. And if we simply go, go this way, go, go digital, go to apps, we can be creating a digital divide. So it's important to take this uh, into consideration in order to not create major or big inequalities, or some sort of inequalities in society. And besides the long-term impacts that I assume that will happen regarding the way that we work and ITC, I also see that things related to general administration will also have some change like the way that we communicate ourselves. Um, I'm seeing the need of being simpler, to being even more straight to the point, to give the right message, both to the internal public and to external public. So I, I see that the, the, the relevance of communication tends to increase. And uh, not just this, but uh, but also the coordination among uh, different branches of the government. 
And when we talk about social security, many, many countries, the branches are completely divided. So you see one branch for pension, another branch for health, another branch for social, for unemployment insurance, or for collecting contributions. And many times they are not that well coordinated. And we see that to give more precise answers, there is a greater need to coordinate and to have more effective policy, more efficient policy, there is also a need of more coordination. So, in sum, we are facing moments of great challenge to members, huge increases in demands, new benefits, new ways of providing service. We at ESA had this ban are having this, this challenge as well, and we need to adapt ourselves. But we see that there are two major lessons, message from the crisis that social security is more important than ever. It is really, really important as a way to, to, to society to keep its cohesion during crisis. Not, to, not the only one, but it's one major channel to it. And also that this crisis, although it's a short-term crisis, it will have many long-term impacts in the way that the social security administrations, in the way that they manage their work. So basically, this is my, my message. I, I, I'm open to, to questions. Thank you very much, um, Caetano. I have uh, right now a comment and question, can comment and questions, both from uh, Vlasta in the first place, and then Federica in the second place. Uh, I will take them uh, together for now, but it's up to you, of course, uh, to develop them separately as you wish. Uh, Vlasta is concerned, as I think uh, many of us, about the formal sector the impact the crisis on the right. legal workers that are not uh, covered uh, except uh, by charity are not covered by social security are the first victims of this uh, economic impact of the crisis does your organization your association have practical recommendations as how to help uh, them, so the informal sector workers, uh, right now, but also in any future crisis, insofar as we can learn something about this one. And uh, Federica is uh, referring to the UN, but more specifically to the ILO Global Commission on the Future of Work, uh, and now even more strongly recommending that Social Security is extended insofar as possible because of the impact that you mentioned. Uh, again, the informal sector is in her concern. And what is the advice that your association is providing to governments to find solutions in this uh, regard? So it's very similar, almost the same sort of concern on the informal sector. And I would like to add uh, as a footnote, an important footnote to this concern for the informal sector that just a few days ago, there was an official statement by the UN Office of the Human Rights regarding uh, social security as a basic fundamental human right so we think that we have to put that in the context of a human right framework at the multilateral level not only in this crisis but far beyond it uh, and then just now david is asking is the emperor naked he would like to know where where, where how is he's naked <laughs> and where are the clothes uh, so if you could also take into account of that naked perspective. Okay. Thank you. Over to you. I think that these questions, they are all related to the coverage of social security. Okay. Uh, and when we talk about coverage of social security, it's not the topic, a subject that appeared now uh, uh, from the COVID crisis. It's a, it's a long term. Uh, uh, perspective of social security and it's interesting because when we establish our project and budget of ESA or this triennium last year 2019 
to establish our project and budget for this triennium, the triennium of 2022-2022, we established four priorities, four topical priorities, okay? The management of social security as our members are the institutions that implement the policy, so they need to have a good management of social security. The second one is exactly this one that you are, that you are mentioning, that, that is the coverage. And it's interesting because when we talk about coverage, we see that regardless of the regardless of the of the region that we are talking about the the coverage is a priority if you see uh, uh, in europe is a priority in africa is a priority in the americas in asia is a priority it's, it's a priority in different ways but it is a priority when when we talk about when we talk for example africa the increase uh, in social security the, the increase in the coverage in social security is a priority because the coverage there is low and they want it to be high. When we see in Europe as well, so we in ESA, we are also invited to participate in, in, in some uh, events and works and papers of, of the European Commission talking exactly about coverage of social security, but in a different perspective. Because here in Europe, although the coverage is high, there is always this new sorts of this geek economics, this new labor relations, and also a fear that this change in technology and its impact in labor relations can, all, can also decrease the coverage of social security. So if I'm talking this point, is because when we talk about coverage of social security, it's, it's, it's a priority to us, it's a priority to the entire world regarding the level of economic development, social development of it. And it was established as our priority when this virus didn't exist or people didn't know that, that they exist. Uh, well, uh, so, uh, uh, but now due to the crisis and then we see the impact that it's having the economic social impact, then we see the relevance of it even more than before. Anyway, uh, and then we are talking about informal workers, we are talking about uh, these geek economics, we are talking about migrant workers. So there are many sorts of workers in which if we see the coverage is low. Uh, I see that the level of coverage, it depends a lot on the level of economic development of a country, countries that are more, that are richer in economic terms, they have a, 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 a bigger uh, impact. But it's not just this, a, a bigger cover, sorry. Uh, but it's not just this, it's too much related to policy as well. So uh, we have to, to extend uh, uh, the social policies, to workers, and these contributory uh, uh, pension schemes, they are part of the social program, okay? We must also think of, of programs that are not related to the contribution of people, because otherwise it can generate these this questions that you are arising, okay, if I do not have a regular worker, work relationship they are not cover. Uh, so we must, we must think about this. And also uh, not just about the sort of coverage to, to people that work not exactly in this, in this traditional work relationship, but also as we are increasing coverage no, in that way, uh, we also must think new ways of financing covers, new ways of collecting contribution to, to social security. The answer, it depends too much on the country. It varies to, to different countries, to different regions, to different levels of the development, to, to different uh, political uh, situations. 
But uh, if we can summarize, I uh, assume that it is this part of new ways for collecting contribution to Social Security, because just the traditional way, it's, it's difficult. And also to extend coverage via non-contributory schemes as well. Thank you, Gaetano. Uh, we have here a question that uh, uh, was also raised by Enrique and I had very much on the top of my mind, which is related to the idea of basic universal income that is coming more and more, is particularly in uh, European countries at the top of the news. And in this context, I would like to enlarge a little bit, Enrique, if you allow me the question. Uh, the issue is how to finance a basic universal income, assuming that it is a good idea, at least for the emergency, if not on a person because the more we have a recession going on, the more we will have balance of payments problems, the more we will have deficit, fiscal deficit being increased in the next few months. So the issue of financing the social security, even in rich countries, is really the core problem. Uh, even if the countries that recognize that it is a human right or are ready to do so, in terms of meaning, financing, meaning the issue is, is a problematic one. So I don't like, I, I would like to know a little bit what you think on the basic universal income and the overall balance of payment fiscal deficit context that we are raising these days with the recession. Yes, well, uh, as we are talking about uh, coverage of social security, if we offer benefits to those people that does not have the traditional employer-employee uh, work relationship. It's a way to increase coverage. So things like this, like you are mentioning, can be uh, one possible way to address this. But anyway, uh, as we are very international, we have to respect the different cultures, the different political, legislative environment of the countries. But uh, concerning this policy, we have to, to take into account an equilibrium of providing something to as many people as possible, so this question of coverage, but it's not just the question of providing something to people, but providing something that is adequate to people. So it's not just, no, everybody's receiving, but everybody's receiving a, such a small amount of money that does not cover anything. So we have to take into consideration not just the coverage, we have to take into consideration the adequacy of these benefits, and also to create something that is sustainable over long term, not to promise something that you have to, to rethink about it uh, uh, two years afterwards. So we have also to take these three vectors into consideration, to, to extend the coverage, provide something that is adequate and something that is sustainable. Because if one of these vectors, they are not very good, it will demand a, a, a reform of what we are supposing to do. Because if we do something that is, have a great coverage, is sustainable, but is not adequate, then two years afterwards, there will be demands for changing the source of benefits in order to be adequate. Or if you provide something with great coverage, which is adequate, but it's not sustainable, then there will be demands for uh, change it to be sustainable. So. Uh, there is no specific, no, there must be this, 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 this way, no formula that is one size fits all, but we have to take into account uh, uh, these vectors into consideration. And we have to see that uh, when we think about social policy uh, as a whole, uh, the social, traditional social security is another pillar in order to provide all the, all the social policies. And in many circumstances, from a management point of view, as we are, then, then what I'm talking now is basically management, not policy itself, but 
uh, as we are talking need of coordination of have something that is uh, to 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 maximize the the uses of to, to, of the resource that we have to maximize in a better in a better way no? the, the 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 use to, to, to do in the best way the uses of resource then the question of coordination uh, and in many circumstances it's better to have one administration one institution that does everything instead of having different branches for many many different things or there are many different institutions for the same thing so if i understood sorry i'm not listening to you according to the crisis and the consequences but also sustainability yes uh, I think that you refer to adequacy of the measures, they have to be adequate, but particularly I think they have to be financial sustainable. If I think this is also uh, the main concern. Um, we have a question here from uh, John. I think there are aspects of the COVID crisis that will be anything but short term, certain term is, uh, is more important. The discussion about coverage, coverage is important, but it starts with access to the coverage and then goes on to coverage of different contingencies. Uh, this is one aspect of the universal basic uh, income. Uh, and adequacy of benefits, as you mentioned. For many years, we have tried to build up all of these with very limited success. Now the increased needs are obvious, but the competition for the available pot of funding is going to be much more severe. It seems to me that this may be the most long-term problem, but is your association able to put forward specific and practical policy perspectives that may uh, help? So it's a little bit, as we say in French, la quadrature du cercle that we are looking for here. Uh, would you like to comment on, on, on this? And then we have some Alejandro that also would like to intervene. But Keitan, over to you. Okay, well, uh, look, uh, our association, if we, if you see, if you, if you look at the DNA okay, of our association, we are member based and our members are the, are the institutions that implement the policy. So they, they are not the institutions that establish the policy. They are the institutions that implement the policy, okay? So uh, taking into account that our members come from that side, our niche in order to attend better their needs and to bring value to them, to what they pay to us, is to provide them with a very good message to the administration of social security, okay? So in the sense that regardless of the policy, how, what's the best way that you can provide this policy, that you can implement this policy in a more efficient way, in a more effective way, uh, with better communication, with a better work environment. So we do much more on this than with the policy uh, itself. So uh, I assume that the major lessons that we will bring to members after this crisis are not exactly policy members, but are more related to the management, the better way to manage social security. If I may, Manuela, I think that she froze. Can you hear me all? Yeah, I, I, can, yeah. I, can, I can hear Yes, Alejandro, please go ahead. Uh, we have some problems with the... Yes, I think you, 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 you froze. Well, there, there are so many things that we can develop. We, we started discussing many of these issues in, in previous sessions. And this makes me uh, remember one phrase that was mentioned by the former Secretary General of the Ibero-American Social Security Association, which said that the best defense for Social Security are results. 
the results nor are not there, you can say whatever you want. So security is not defendable. And so security is a human right. Already in Article 22 of the Declaration of Human Rights, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, it, there is a mention to social security. And the big challenge is not only for social institutions, members of ESA, but for all countries in the world, is that they only cover one minimum part of the world's population. Uh, I, I, always, I have always thought that uh, pensions was the possibly the best private and public argument for selling because you're selling for something that is really very long term, it's in the future. So everybody were discussing in terms of social security pensions, many in the private sector to sell it, pensions, and in 40 years you will have this, and the, pub, the public sector pensions in 40 years you have this. The problem is that, and that's why I, I really agree with the title of the session, is the emperor naked, is that this sanitary crisis put, brought social security to the day to day of the people. I need health care now, and I lost my income now. And I know that this is going to last at least for 10 years. If you see uh, the, the recovery of the crisis in 2008, we already started to recover and to look a little bit like normal in 2018. And interest rates are not really very conductive to, to economic growth in many parts of the world. So economic growth was really very slow in many parts of the world. And to me, the problem is that the argument not to extend Social Security was that there was no fiscal space. And my problem now is that many countries are indebting themselves. There are quite huge debts in America and, and in Europe. The fiscal space, I am afraid, would be reduced in many, many countries. So these and possibly future governments will have the same argument. We don't have the fiscal space to provide for Social Security. And if we don't have the fiscal space to provide for Social Security, we're going not to have not only the COVID-19, but the COVID-20 and the COVID-21 and the COVID-22, plus unemployment, plus social unrest. Now people are, are being disciplined, have been confined, but I don't know how confined and how disciplined I will be if in my family I cannot bring an income for the next three, six, ten months or two years. I think the, the, the situation is critical, and in all terms, we have to really think outside the box. And I think that Social Security has to reinvent itself to, to the new world and possibly make very strong links between Social Security institutions and ministries of health, ministries of labor, between ESA and the ILO in, in, in other terms, and that these links have to be strengthened and much better coordinating. Otherwise, I think that now the perception of many people is that effectively one part of the emperor is naked because we, even rich countries cannot afford to provide security for its people. Things as ridiculous as the mask. Very rich countries didn't have the masks which are less than one euro per, per person. And that is something that is pushing many, many families and many, many companies in, in, into problems. So I think that this crisis really showed that in many senses, not only social security, in many senses, the ways that we are doing, the ways that the economy is doing, the ways that wealth is being distributed, has to change to dress the emperor and to dress development. So I, I wonder if, if you can share with us if your members or the ILO which, with, with whom you are in contact with have shown some light of what the new thinking should be because we cannot continue to do things as if nothing can happen. Thank you, Marcela. Uh, this is this your comment. Uh, Alejandro and Caetan, if I may, I would like to link Alejandro's comments to the 
question raised by Jean-Victor minutes ago, which is the ideological background of this discussion and the, the ideological background in the role of social security in the current crisis and beyond. Uh, ideological meaning the shifting from uh, solidarity at the private level to what should be solidarity ensured by the public sector, so governmental policies and institutions. So uh, Jean-Victor was also asking, according to Alejandro's thinking, if we will change, if we will shift in the next few months and years towards another framework uh, model, if I may, regarding the role of social security uh, yeah. because of the consequences of the crisis. So yeah. please go ahead. Uh, well, one, one of the interesting points of, of, of this crisis is that we are seeing that the responses are much more pragmatic than ideological. Then we see that the, the regardless of the country, if it's more on the right wing or on the left wing, we are seeing the, the a major presence of the government spending more, taxing less, uh, regardless of the of the political wing, and and then we, we see because this is very pragmatic. We we are seeing a real crisis, and we are seeing the social impact, the economic impact of it. So it shows in that way that uh, when we are really facing a crisis, that social security is essential. To, to keep social stability, to keep social cohesion, to keep political stability, uh, uh, regardless of the current wing of the government. So uh, this is very interesting in that sense, that it's a very pragmatic uh, response to it. But anyway, uh, I can foresee in the future, because uh, I, I think that history, it comes as a, a pendulum. Huh? So there is this quite pragmatic approach now due to this crisis, what can we do in a very short term not to keep uh, social stability, political stability, social cohesion, but uh, uh, we have to take care because the, the pendulum can go to another direction, not right now, but one year from now, two years from now, as we see that there will be difficulties in sustaining these situations, and then there probably will be a call to, to fiscal stability in the one, two years from now. So things can, can be changing. But uh, uh, we see that th this is important, that social security is essential regardless of the ideological perspective that you have, if you really see a moment of crisis like, like this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, regarding the role of your association david is asking if the priorities that you mentioned minutes ago when you described the role of your association if these priorities should change now in the next few months years as a consequence of the new context i'm yeah this is there so so we established four priorities uh, uh, uh for this triennium and we established these priorities in june last last of course that we worked before and the before it approved the the, 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 this priority in June last year. And the, there are four priorities. And on the opposite, I see that this crisis it just reinforces the priority that we established. We established four of them, and I think that three of them, this crisis reinforced the priority. The one, one of the priorities is the management of social security. So we see that in times like this, you see the, the, the relevance of management of social security. Benefits are changing, uh, the, there is a, a huge spike in demand, so we are, you, it is becoming five times bigger, ten times bigger is the number of benefits that you must provide, changing the benefits, changing the way that you are working. So the, the, the need of business continuity, because 
uh, you can establish the best policy of all, okay? The most, uh, but if you do not have a good management, you cannot implement this. So, so the so the 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 the, the, the priority of, of of a good management of social it keeps. Another point that most people mentioned uh, here and also was the first question and is one of our priorities as well, uh, it is the coverage and how can we especially provide administrative solutions in order to increase coverage. So we see that uh, just the opposite, the, the, this crisis it reinforces, the, it reinforces the, the need for, for for getting coverage as a priority. Another priority is the social cohesion. How can the social security increases in quality, decrease in quality? That's the way that we manage social security, that we administer social security, increase in quality, reduce in quality. And we see that the question of social cohesion is very important at this time of crisis. So it's been, so uh, I see the opposite. It increases the, the relevance of our priorities. And the fourth priority is aging population. That's more a long term perspective. So the demographic has not changed due to, well, uh, not that much no? uh, due to the uh, COVID. It changed, but not that much due to, due to, due to this COVID crisis. But Anyway, as we are talking about social security and the aging of population is very important. Then one point that uh, the, the, when we talk about uh, the topical priority regarding management, I assume that a, a major perspective on business continuity in times of crisis can be one way to look at this priority because it's something that we, that we are seeing now we, in many countries, many, almost all countries. Uh, are dealing with this, so it's a time for us to write something to to be in the memory and to be for usage for the next generations and next times. Because this pandemic, it happens. We do not do not know when it will happen again, or such a crisis like this will happen again. It can be next year. It can be 20 years, 50 years from now. But it's good to have a memory of how to react to it and how did we react to it in order for the next generations to take advantage of, of, of this history. So uh, the opposite, I see that the, that the this crisis reinforces the priority that we established before. Thank you, Gaetano. Can I ask from the institutional point of view, since you are very closely related to LO work, uh, this discussion on uh, where is the borderline between management and policies, uh, where do you stand in that? Uh, I mean, do you leave the policy debate to the ILO forum and you support it with some technical inputs on specific social security issues? Or from the point of view of your members, would you like to inter intervene more, maybe, in the policy debate where the I will be the core, not only one, but certainly the core protagonist in the next few months? And again, it is, uh, for me, an ideologically and macroeconomic debate in the first place, because as soon as you mention social cohesion and inequalities, you cannot avoid the ideological debate, unfortunately, <laughs> even if you keep it under some technical uh, framework. Uh, so, just clarify exactly how do you see yourself, not now, but in the next few months, in this uh, debate that will happen more and more, particularly at the ILO level? Okay, well, uh, managing any NGO or managing any institution, uh, you both see your, what is your niche? And by, by this, we must see uh, who are the members of ESA. So the, 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 the members of ESA are those institutions who implement the policy, okay? And, and when we talk with them, we see that they are, that, how do they see themselves, okay, by talking with them? 
Well, I, I have this, and how do I provide better service to people? Okay, how do they get the benefits? How do they pay the contributions in a simpler way, in a most efficient way? So, as we are member bases, we need to see what the members want and then provide the service that they want to be provided to them. And in that way, and we also have to see our size, what we are, by, by one side, what people that pay the contributions to us, what they want from us, and by the other side, considering our sizes, our speciality, what, how can we provide this? So taking into account the demand side from the members, we see that they are too much focus on the way to manage social security. So regarding this, we are naturally, we will naturally work more to the management of social security than to the policy itself. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I wonder if there are other questions or comments. I, I do not see anything in writing right now. Um, the floor is open. <laughs> In the meanwhile, can I ask uh, if, if you feel uh, beyond the relations that you have with ILO, which are probably the most natural ones in institutional terms, I mean, but beyond that, uh, with the High Commissioner on Human Rights, how do you work with them? Uh, what, are, what sorts of linkages? Do you have normally and in these special circumstances now, since as I said minutes ago, social security is considered a fundamental human right from the point of view of the Human Rights Commissioner? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we, uh, uh, of course, that as we are an NGO, we, we, we always look to establish good relationships with other NGOs, with other international organizations by showing to them how can we complement their works, okay? Because we also have to see the, our size comparing to them as well. So, uh, as you mentioned, the ILO is really, really a major partner of us, okay? No, no, no question about this. So, if you see what's the major partner of us, it is the ILO, but we do not work just with the ILO. Uh, if you see, we have very good partnerships uh, participating uh, in their events, asking them to participate in our events, changing idea with them, uh, with the OECD, with the European Union, with BRICS, with G20, with the World Bank. And uh, how do we see the, uh, that we can uh, uh, increase our participation? By providing to them some knowledge that they do not have. And the knowledge that they do not have, that we have, is how do you implement the policy in the best way? So basically, if you see, of course, that the, the ILO is the, our major partner, okay? No, no doubt regarding this, but it's not just the ILO. We have good relationships with the OECD, with the European Commission, with the World Bank, uh, with UNICEF as well, with G20, with BRICS, so with many other international organizations and NGOs and forums. But by showing ourselves how can we complement their work, not compete with them. Yeah, that, that's very clear. Of course, your, your, your nature as an NGO avoids any sort of competition on equal terms, but certainly you can have an influence by providing information, for instance, on the monitoring of the different measures that are being taken, because you have a sort of overview that is a privileged position in mm -hmm. terms of comparisons and ex changes, I guess. Among. So at the beginning, we started legal workers in formal sector, those that are out of any sort of coverage because of the nature of their status within the society and the economy. And migrants, many, many migrants also fall usually in that sort of uh, 
uh, I would call it uh, limbo or, or, or gray area, even if they are not well covered in terms of safety nets. Uh, so even the legal migrants have problems. Do you follow also this issue together with uh, IOM, the International Organization for Migration? And when I think about migrants, I also think about refugees, uh, which is the next door, if I may say so. Maybe yeah. you would yeah. like to can I, can I just add to no. that question? I'd, uh, Go ahead, Gersh. Yeah, I'd, um, I just wanted to add, uh, as you know, <laughs> on the refugees, not only on the refugees, um, uh, similar to that question is how get the unrepresented get represented in your organization? Is ISA working directly uh, with trade unions? Are those trade unions uh, through ILO or uh, directly with you uh, also trying to represent the worries um, of, uh, of the unrepresented or the the workers who are not in trade unions because they are they have a status that doesn't allow them to uh, to get into uh, uh, into the bargaining process okay well uh, the way that the members uh, are related to ESA is different of the ILO okay so and this this is important to understand the the way that we work okay uh, and this comes from the very, very orange of the ISA, because ISA was established nine, two years ago, to this year in October, it will be 93 years ago, it falls in 19, 1927. Uh, so some years after ILO. And at that time, and even now, it's, it is, its DNA, it's, it, this DNA continues, okay? Because then there was the ILO who was establishing the policy, uh, who, who was talking about the policy, who was making these contacts with the tripartite contacts, things like this. But at that time, they saw that, okay, there are these hundreds of institutions that implement these policies and they have nothing in order to see the best way to implement the, these policies. So at that time, 1927, they created the ESA. So ESA is a member-based and who are the members of ESA? The members of ESA are the social security institutions that implement the policy that manage the social security. So it comes from a long time ago, from, from the beginning of ESA, this relationship to the management of social security. And ILO, it deals with the, the ILO, it deals with the policy of social security. So, uh, in that sense, we do not have as members uh, trade unions or even representatives of employers or governments itself. It can be related to government in the sense that the Social Security Administration can be uh, an administration, something that is related to the government, but it's not the government itself. So, it's something different. And uh, regarding what, what you're talking about, the, the, the coverage of migrant workers, of refugees, then we, we take this into the perspective of coverage, of this priority of coverage. And then we, when we talk with members and when they interchange ideas with them, the major approach will be how can we change, interchange among ourselves in order to see what are the practices that we can do, administratively speaking, in order to increase the coverage. So it's a, 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 another way to see a coverage. How can we increase the covers? What could be the administrative aspects 
in order to increase cover. So you can see one that's nothing related, for example, to the to the COVID crisis. Uh, how many African countries in Africa? Of course, that the coverage is quite low. Uh, but how many African countries are working in order to increase coverage? Although the bancarization of the countries are low, many people, most people, have mobile phones. So they are using this technology by creating apps of mobile phones in which they can send information, pay things in order to increase coverage. So, so you see, you can, you do not just work with policy, but you must have to also to see to administrative innovations in which you can increase coverage and many countries do this. So uh, uh, some examples of the difference between the uh, some organizations that use more with the policy and another ones that use more with the implementation of policies. And this works complement one another. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Caetano. I would like to give the floor to Alejandro that has some uh, well, ideas. We're reaching the, the, the end of the session. We have abuse of the patients and goodwill of uh, Marcelo. Thank you very much, Marcelo. I would like just to, to, to make a comment on, on, on the last question by Geshe and your last uh, intervention, since actually with Jean-Victor Grua, myself, with Warren McGillivray, Annette Tamaño, we led a commission to analyze historically the relation between ESA and the ILO. So Ed Tamaño, Warren McGillivray, and we all went through the trials of the creation of ESA. And at the creation of ESA in 1927, there was one, one of the main objectives was to reach international labor conventions, the ILO conventions and standards to the social security institutions. There was a really um, rights-based approach because the ILO knew that uh, with their tripartite membership with ministers of labor, ministers, uh, employers and workers, they might not reach directly social security institutions. This, this was a way to aim at reaching to social security institutions, ILO, ILO standards. And some of, uh, answering to Geisha too, some of the standards in particular convention 102, recommends, and those uh, and it's an obligation for those countries who have adopted Convention 102, recommends that the governing body of the social security institutions who are members of ESA are tripartite and, are, and, and the workers are also represented. But I think that the Achilles tendon of both ESA and ILO is that those who are not covered, those who are not represented, those who have no voice, which is 90% of 95% of the world population, those who are in the informal economy, those who are migrants, those who are refugees, they do not sit either at the ILO nor at ADISA. So it's quite difficult. And this is why some kind of different functioning has to be found and different collaboration has to be found, in my opinion, between ILO and ADISA. And I think that this COVID-19 crisis uh, highlights the importance of possibly moving the targets for both institutions. In, in particular, I, I was very supportive of the social protection floor at the ILO and, the, and its development, but not at the expense of social security on, on the other hand. And I think that now the world has to move to a social security version two and uh, social protection floor version two that includes not only the minimum, because now I'm in the third age. I'm retiree for almost six years now. Now I'm, the I, I'm in the vulnerable group. And if I would be only covered by a social protection floor just to um, guarantee a minimum income, I would not get the healthcare intervention if I were in, in one of the many countries that they don't have intervention because I would not be protected. So I think this is a fantastic opportunity. It has been mentioned in other sessions of great talks, 
that we should not miss this opportunity and just wait that to go back to a normal. I think we have to push to a new different, a different that includes very highly social security and social protection. So thank you very much, uh, Marcelo, for sharing you. your your insights and, and your patience and, and, and your time. We're looking forward, we follow ESA, we follow ILO, and, and we thank you very much.